Well, now it seems like everyone's paying attention to Embracer Group, which, if you've been watching Newswave for any length of time, you've probably seen them come up. I'll uh, we'll also talk about them as THQ Nordic because they have changed their name quite a few times, actually, over the last decade or so, but they've certainly flown under the radar for a lot of people in gaming, despite them accruing a ton of developers, intellectual properties, studios, the whole thing. But the other day, they made a very splashy transaction with Square, at least entered into the agreement. I believe it's going to close uh, over the summer, mostly. But seeing Tomb Raider change hands is really the thing that sparked a lot of this. Having people wonder, who exactly is Embracer Group? Well, one thing's for sure, we have to pay attention to them now. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Small Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So I was seeing a lot of these articles pop up. Things like, who is Embracer Group? Everything you need to know about the massive game company. And this struck me as interesting because I, it, it's something that's been going on, like I said, for a little while now. They've just done a really good job, I guess, kind of hiding it despite spending a lot of money and just bringing together a lot of these studios and IPs under one umbrella. But they've kind of structured it in a way that... Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's throwing a lot of people off because of the way that they have set up their entire company and the fact that some of the intellectual properties they pick up tend to be ones that are struggling a bit along with those studios. We saw Square go over some of their financials with like Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal, and they weren't really making Square any money at all. It was just about break even. You're not really going to do well in gaming if, if in business in general if you're just breaking even all the time. But according to according to Embracer Group, they believe they can have these studios profitable in about two years. We'll see if that actually happens. But I wanted to go over a few things here with Embracer. Uh, specifically, this is their site that very quickly gives a snapshot of, of their overall workforce, uh, 850 plus intellectual properties. 10 operative groups, 119 development studios, 12,500 plus people, which is uh, closer to 14,000, by the way, now that they've uh, acquired the 1,100 or so employees from Square Enix. Uh, that That's pretty massive. That would actually make them larger than Activision Blizzard, EA. Uh, lit uh, they're still smaller than Ubisoft, to my knowledge. Uh, but basically, they would be... Uh, towards the top when it comes to number of developers that they can have working on any different project all at once. They do talk about some of their intellectual properties here. That includes uh, Saints Row, Goat Simulator, Dead Island, Darksiders, Metro, MX vs. ATV, Kings of Amalar, Time Splitters, Satisfactory, Wreckfest, Inger Insurgency, World War Z, Borderlands, and more. Remember, they did acquire Gearbox. They also acquired Saber Interactive, who they themselves have several subsidiaries. And that's kind of the way Embracer Group has worked this out. One, they've changed their name a couple of times. Originally, they were like Nordic Games, and then they went to THQ Nordic, and then they went to Embracer Group AB, but there was like another Embracer Group. And seriously, it becomes very confusing looking at basically their family tree of developers and subsidiaries all at once. Now, I have seen different charts doing their best to outline this. Um, like we have, I, I want to show you this one first. This more or less just compares everything, like kind of in like this circle pie chart format where Embracer Group is on the right versus like Ubisoft, Microsoft, Take-Two, Sony, Tencent, and EA. The thing I will say about this chart that's kind of misleading is every studio looks to be the same size. They're just showing logos, right? That's not the case. Like Free Radical is not the same size as Ubisoft Montreal, which look how many Ubisoft logos are in here. They love their name, don't they? Uh, but Ubisoft Montreal, significantly larger than Free Radical, but they take up the same size on this chart. So sure, we, we know Embracer Group has a lot of studios, but some of them are fairly small, whereas Ubisoft, I believe, has like 20,000 employees or something crazy, and uh, they have several large studios. However, as I said, Embracer Group is towards the top of the chart when it comes to number of developers that they have available to them and that they are employing. And if we take a look at their 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 chart or their family tree, I guess you can say, when it comes to their company. Embracer Group is at the top here. It's Embracer Group AB. Like I said, Nordic Games, THQ Nordic, uh, and now Embracer Group, which THQ Nordic is now down here. They, To my knowledge, they made it like their subsidiary of theirs. Again, it's, it's very strange and more complicated than I think it should be, and I almost wonder if they do that kind of on purpose. 
But Embrace the Group, THQ Nordic, Co Media, uh, and, and then we can see Saber Interactive in here, and they have lines going all over the place, mostly because these different arms and branches will, will act independently of each other. So, do you remember how we had the THQ Nordic kind of showcase, right? They've also announced another one, I believe, for, for August, so it was pretty far in advance. But before they had announced one, and people got really excited because they were like, oh, time splitters, we're finally going to see this thing. Is there a remaster as well? Are you just doing a remake? Are you doing a new one? And they had to respond and be like, yeah, that's not us. Everyone's confused at that point. They're like, well, hold on. What did THQ Nordic, you guys... You guys opened Free Radical. Deep Silver's there. Well, no, actually, Deep Silver is... You got to follow the lines, right? Here we go. Down here, Co-Media. We come down and around here, and there's Deep Silver. Deep Silver has uh, Volition, Dan Buster Studios, Fish Labs, and Free Radical. Free Radical is working on the new Time Splitters game. So you can kind of see how from the outside... I mean, without this chart, we'd be completely lost, right? Uh, how it's very difficult to keep up with... All of the all of the transactions they've been making. I mean, getting something like Saber Interactive immediately gave them a, a ton of uh, of uh, of developers and studios like overnight. When they got Gearbox, that I mean, they all of a sudden had Borderlands, and they have been making these larger acquisitions alongside of many many smaller acquisitions to build up the the intellectual property list that they have, and they love doing remasters of older titles they've been doing it consistently so that was one of the reasons i brought up that if you like some of these intellectual properties that you hear about from square going over to embracer group and square hasn't done much with them even like deus ex you could throw that in there but like gex uh we we heard about legacy of kane like soul reaver thief these are all games you could see embracer group take and have one of their many studios do a remaster and just release it. And that's, I think, a way that they have been able to just kind of get back some of the money that they are spending. And then they work to reinvest it. In fact, right now, from what I saw, they, they actually were taking more financing and kind of keeping their debt under control at the same time to allow them to have another $800 million to a $1 billion to use for more acquisitions after Square Enix. Let me give you another example of a game that I feel like got announced and no one realized it was Embracer Group technically. So during that PlayStation experience, we had Knights of the Old Republic remake announced and it was really exciting. It was like, oh, they're, they're doing this remake. I wonder how that's going to go over. I wonder what they're going to change or, or anything there, right? Oh, it's on the PlayStation 5. Cool. That'll look great, I'm sure. And then we get the logo of Aspire, and everyone's like, oh, that's interesting. They've done, like, remake remasters of some of these Star Wars games, and they're going to do this full-on big-budget remake. Huh. I wonder how that'll work out. Technically, that was Embracer Group because, it, again, got to follow the lines. Embracer Group. We go down here. We look at Co Media. Go over here to Saber Interactive, and there's Aspire. So you have to go through several steps to get to Embracer Group, but technically... Yes, they are working to create that Knights Old Republic remake for the PlayStation 5 that everyone was excited for. It's just a fascinating situation that one entity with like Embracer Group can get so large and do it in about 10 years. They were founded in 2011 with like THQ as like one of their starting points. Who would have thought we would have got to this point, right? Where they have amassed such a workforce, such a number of intellectual properties, and even announcing game after game after game. And people not even realizing it's Embracer Group. It's uh, it's impressive stuff, I guess. But let me know what you guys think about this with Embracer Group now really being thrusted into the spotlight with their deal with Square Enix for several of their studios and a ton of intellectual properties. Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.